Hello. <laughs> We're very tempted to show you the makings of that instead of Tom without the vines. Looking very, it's, it's, it's as close with to John Cleese performance. With me, performance me on done. a little kind of um, stage thing, and Len in the darkness saying, uh, uh, "Grab a vine, grab a punch a vine." No, not like that. Fling your arms about, but don't fling your arms about. Just fling. It was, um, it's what I trained for. <laughs> It's like, what was the, what, what was it about this script that, that really stood out to you where you said, yes, I shall be Ichabod Crane? Um, of the, the pile of uh, pilots that I read this year, and it was the first year that I'd uh, considered coming over here to do um, a big TV show. Uh, of so it worked out for you. Thank you. I'm sorry? It worked out for you. <laughs> it's done all right. Um, <laughs> This uh, was the last one that I read, and I instantly had to read it again because I thought, no, <laughs> really. Uh, I didn't believe that anyone had the balls to make a show like this. Uh, and then I was told it, it was true, so I just couldn't not be in it, really. Um, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> mother. <laughs> And for, for the producers, I mean, was, it, was it a sort of love at first sight situation with Tom? Oh, yeah, absolutely. In fact, Heather Caden right over here was the one who said, you really need to see uh, Tom Meissen. He's incredible. And the funny thing was that uh, Ichabod had not been written as a Brit at first. He, w he was an American. Uh, and very quickly, uh, I think we, we, we just couldn't find an actor who didn't feel like he was from the valley, frankly. <laughs> and and it, it was, it just, we just didn't believe it. And we thought, you know, if, if we go British, uh, what'll be particularly interesting about it is, well, if he fought for the Americans and he was British, what's that story? So that became a very compelling story right, right away. And then Tom walked in the room and just, you know, blew the doors off the place and, and we knew we had our Ichabod. You blew the doors off the place. Yeah. <laughs> How's that sound? But I think it's important to note also that the vision of what Ichabod is, because obviously Tom is a very strapping, good-looking British man. Oh, but stop. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! But, but, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love you, Tom. I love you. <laughs> but it was, I mean, Len Wiseman, the visuals of the pilot, the visual of what Tom was going to be wearing and his hair and his facial hair and his boots and everything came out of Len's I brain. made him good looking. <laughs> <laughs> you made him make a big crane. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I was wondering whether Yolanda could be a regular. <laughs> <laughs> a, a bit like Ziggy in Quantum Leap. <laughs> and every time there's a problem, Crane can just press the button and, and ask her, ask a weeping lady. <laughs> Alex, what do you think? I, I think she gets her own series, man. <laughs> also, we have, we have actors who are so crazy talented that you, all you want to do is write jokes and lines for them that they can pull off. And, and, you know, I think what's so wonderful about what Tom is doing in that scene is he's not reaching for it at all. He's just doing it as Ichabod would do it, and that's what makes it funny and endearing and wonderful. I, I think if, if it had been played for the joke, uh, it wouldn't have worked. So, you know, so Tom, you got the part. <laughs> um, but I think the other thing is, too, that, like, all of the, all of the sort of man-out-of-time bits, you know, Ichabod interacting with, you know, motor vehicles and, and you know, and, and the sort of thing, uh, I think with any other, any other actor, it's, it's a very difficult line to walk because sometimes it looks sticky. Mm -hmm. uh, but Tom, you really managed to, is that something that you sort of have to tap into something different performance-wise, or are you just sort of naturally that rakish? <laughs> one. I missed that, sorry. <laughs> Was it deeply offensive? Uh, 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 it's, when you get really, really nice moments like that, uh, the, the flouncing tart in me just wants to ham it up. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's the biggest challenge, is uh, not indulging myself too much in the very, very funny scripts that we're given. Tom, uh, everybody is Googling flouncing tart right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> Uh, yeah, those, I mean, those are the most fun, they're incredibly fun parts, uh, moments to play. And a lot of my career to date has been in that kind of realm. 
So it's important for me to try and forget about all of that stuff and uh, remember the more serious side of Crane and just let the jokes that are written come, come through that, really. It's a fine balance. It's, I, it's very tough. Did I let you know that this <laughs> job that I'm doing is it's incredibly difficult? Last Sunday, I had a conversation with Alex uh, over the phone, and he, he'd mapped out in precise detail what's going to happen for the rest of this season and ideas for season two. And I got off the phone, and every hair was standing on end. Let's come back over here. Right. Um, I might be totally off, but from what I've seen, um, Ichabod has been really trying to assimilate to modern society, not just out of necessity, but because he really wants to fit in now with uh, his new environment. And I was wondering, because of this new dynamic between Ichabod and the rest of the entire world, if he was given the chance to go back in time and be with his wife again, would he? That's a great That's question. A really question. Yeah. Wow. That's a really good question. Um, it's, mm, the, the more, the more, I mean, there's undoubtedly a connection with Lieutenant Abigail Mills. <laughs> I don't know Go easy, your don't wife is sitting happy. at the table. Don't get too happy. Platonic. You perverts. No? And no. I've seen some of these pictures online as well, by the way, guys. <laughs> Not cool. Fan art rocks. <laughs> Who ships Ikavi? You were saying. Where were we? <laughs> oh, yes. But then there is, there's always in the back of his head, oh my God, I have a wife and she's a witch. I'm going to be in so much trouble. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can try, he can try and assimilate himself into modern culture, but I think that the moment Ichabod becomes completely 100% at home in the present world, I think we've lost something. I don't know whether you guys would agree. Uh, I hope so. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think I think it's 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 important to know where his where he's from, and remember that 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 this is what he's trying to to salvage, as well as you know, apocalypse, all of that stuff. <laughs> um, it's a very good, good question. I'll think about that. That is an excellent episode I'll let you know idea, next by time. the way. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Will the triangle be Ikabina? I'm trying to figure out I don't know, but I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't wait to see the reaction of a 200-year-old witch <laughs> to yeah. a new girl taking her husband. <laughs> um, uh, but I what? haven't been dubbed yet, so I still have my very thick Mexican accent. <laughs>